<laughs> hey, Mark. Hello, hello, hello. Let me rename myself to my real name. Hi, Lisa. Hi, D. Todd, how are you? I am well. How are you today? Doing great. Thanks. Yes, awesome. I've been looking forward to this. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. How's your week going? Oh, that's exactly what I was asking you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I uh, just closed on a, on a real cute little 2011 brick house that I am going to sell on seller financing. Nice. Bought it for, it's probably about, I don't know. I was actually just running comps on it to see what today's value might be. And uh, I got it for about 50000 and I think it's probably, I don't know, back in um, early summer, it was coming in around two fifty. Mm. Um. Good job. Oh, thank you. Well, I really can't take all the credit. I think uh, a huge blessing was the Lord because one of the uh, big... Um, leans it was a weird kind of a city lean and i won't go into it but it was something i've never seen before and the city um forgave the whole debt nice by the time i closed on it oh beautiful how so, much was the lean Twenty three thousand five hundred. it still might have been a good deal right yeah yeah even with it and yeah. I kept telling the tell company, check again, check again, because, you know, there there is a debt. I don't want y'all to get stuck. <laughs> yeah. And um, they sent me the receipt that's or the uh, letter that said it's a zero balance. Oh, goodness. I could not close fast enough. <laughs> what are you, what is your plan with the deal now? Are you going to clean it up or are you just going to throw it on the market? What do you want to do? I'm going to seller finance it. Okay. And um, this is the one I was telling you there was an MOC. Uh huh. Oh, hang on, Rob. Sorry about that, Lisa. I accidentally muted you. Got it. Are we uh, okay now? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Okay. So, you know, you can't, a bank's not going to lend money, as far as I know, uh, on a uh, house with an MOC on it. So, you know, it was just a great opportunity for me to sell or finance it because I really do want to build up a significant amount of monthly income, mm -hmm. cash flow and seller financing. So I think this will be a big contributing factor nice um so you know and that you know since i would be the lender i don't really care if there's an moc on there right what's an moc memorandum of contract okay like uh memorandum what what is that when you say a moc there's a memorandum of a contract was there a land contract before what was going on no no it's a memorandum of contract so like when i first bought the property, or I'm sorry, when I first got the property under contract, I thought there would be a significant amount of income mm -hmm. and there, not as much as there actually is, but there, um, um, or if a seller is a little wobbly is what I call it, you know, they don't look like they're, they might, you know, if a snowflake flies by the window where someone makes them a better offer, they don't understand the loyalty of one contract, one buyer. And so I put a memorandum of contract on there, which actually puts a, um, it clouds the title is basically what it does. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Like a claim of interest. I am. Exactly. Exactly. I'm sorry. I knew there was a certain way that you said it and I could not remember. Yeah. So, yeah. but you have, a, so you put a claim of interest on it. Yes. And then someone else put a claim of interest on it. Oh, and you still close. So you own it. So you really, you really can't sell it unless they remove their claim of interest or you might, I would get an attorney to send them a letter and tell them they better move it because else you're going to sue them and for for um um what is that called when when you for um like make a false claim on a title like fraud it's more like a fraud type thing so i would get them to move it remove it it might take you know a couple letters from an attorney or a letter might get them to remove it Yes, I did have my attorney call them and they pretty much told them where to go. Yeah, I kind of remember you talking about this mm -hmm. one before. Mm -hmm. So if you sell it on seller finance, eventually you're going to have to, if they ever pay it off or want to refi or do something, or you keep it as a rental forever, right? Yeah, yeah. But but selling it for seller financing at worth 250, you could probably get 50, 60 grand down to get your money back too exactly that's what i'm hoping i say you know your your um down payment idea is i'm sorry the amount of down payment that you're coming up with is much better than what i i had hoped for so i'm just gonna hope for that <laughs> yeah um so i'm going over tomorrow to meet some um contractors that are gonna hopefully get the house ready in a week there's a bunch of junk in it and yeah clean it out awesome. yeah it's it's one of those uh, cases where the um the family member that doesn't work and all that kind of stuff lived in the house no electricity no water so you can imagine gotcha. how all the trash that's in there so yeah um, that's why you got it for fifty thousand dollars that's a good job yeah 100%. Yeah. yeah yep. awesome so well, i hope to have it finished and then ready to sell this weekend and sold by the end of the weekend that is my goal awesome so next week out we'll we'll ask you <laughs> okay yeah awesome so um so tonight i gotta stop i gotta call the make at 8 30 so i gotta make sure um i gotta be off right at 8 30 tonight for we're going an hour we got to stick to the timeline today. Um, but um, all right, D, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I am well, thank you. What what's um, where are you calling from? What uh, city do you live in? I actually live in Redford um, currently in Sacramento right now. <laughs> oh, so you live All in Redford, Asian. Michigan, in Sacramento, California. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome. Good. Well, thank you for coming. Um, you got to join my Facebook page, TC Deals Detroit. Okay. Um, there's a lot of meetups in locally. So when you're in town, you got to come. There was one last night, a really good one. Okay. Will um, do. Yeah. And um, um, Robin, how, how are you? Hey, Mustafa. Oh, there's oh, Robin. hey, can you hear me? I can. How are you? I am doing great. Great, awesome. great. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Southfield, Michigan. Oh, great. We got Michigan. So I'm a newbie. I'm just getting started. Okay. Well, TC Deals Detroit is my Facebook page, just so um, I'll try to get all the different... Um, local meetups there's there's some good ones around here i'd love to see you guys face to face and oh, see how i can help you and i know mustafa is that um dr mustafa yes sir that's me that's you good yeah mustafa is in the, um um he's a colleague of mine he's in one of my mastermind groups and we were just on when i told him to jump on he's from michigan also and then um, we got Lisa, tell us where you're from again. I, um, so everyone knows what state you're in. Texas. 
Texas. Yep, she's mm-hmm. in Texas. So she's a she's a regular. And um, and then we got EPS LLC. W- where are you calling from, EPS? If you could hear us. Okay. Yep. Jump in whenever you want. But um, so here, I wanted to tell you guys, you know, a lot of us just to, you can always Google wholesaling what it is. And I'll just briefly mention it. I'm going to go pretty fast on it. Wholesaling is when you find a motivated seller. All right. Someone that does not want to list it on the MLS. And why do they not want to? The house might be in bad condition. It might be going into foreclosure or in foreclosure. Someone might have passed away. Someone got a divorce. I call them the Ds. Divorce, death. Um, um, I'm, I'm divorced, death, and... Debt. Debt, yeah. There's, all, there's a bunch of Ds. But anyways, so there's an issue with it. So we're trading... Um, we're trading speed. We're gonna we're gonna speed and convenience for for and we're gonna get a discount for the property. Okay, we don't want they don't have to clean out the house. They don't have to fix it up. They really are considered don't wanters. They don't want the house. So we're looking for those type of homes that we could come in there and help them and solve their problems. We're problem solvers first and 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 make them an offer and at a discount and then what we do they sign a purchase agreement they agree all right let's say they agree at fifty thousand dollars and and the house is worth 150 and then we turn around in the purchase agreement it says we could assign the contract to an anyone so then we assign it to another investor who's going to pay let's say 60,000, all right? So I sign it to another investor for 60. I didn't put any earnest money deposit. I didn't have to get a loan. I didn't have to do anything. No one checked my credit. And I go ahead and get it under contract. And then I assign it to the investor for 60 and they step in my shoes and they close at 60. The seller gets 50 and I get 10. All right. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. So I I wholesale that deal to another investor and I made $10,000. Okay. If anyone has any questions about that, just raise your hand um, or speak up. And what I want to talk to you guys about another strategy that I am doing every day now, I'm telling you the last couple of weeks, it's been crazy. Um, I, um, expanded my team. I have a VA, which is a virtual assistant um, from the Philippines, um, working for me. He's really good. He came in highly recommended. Um, I pay him $8 an hour, which is a big amount of money over in the Philippines. Okay. He could talk to sellers. He could use the mojo dialer calling people. He could lock up deals. Um, he's really good. So I'm going to keep this guy. And I have two local guys that I that are also on my sales team. One guy does mass texting and another guy manages everybody else, the VA and, and the mass texting guy. And also he makes phone calls and, and does a lot of things for me. So, so those are my three guys. And then I hired today actually another VA to, um, I pay $4 an hour, 40 hours a week. And that's still a lot of money. It doesn't sound like it to us, but it is. Um, And she is my personal assistant and which I really, really need. I need her to handle things that I shouldn't be handling and I got to train her up. And and then from there, she's also going to be I'm going to teach her how to scrape. Um, I'm going to teach her how to scrape Facebook and and reach out to buyers on LinkedIn, Facebook, um, Instagram, all over the place. 
And then she's going to initially introduce herself and introduce me. And then if they sound good, if they're ready to buy now, I'm going to get on the phone with them. So my main job I want to do is talk to hot leads from my sales team. If they need any help, we got a group WhatsApp that they say, check this deal out. It's in Podio. It's hot. And then I get on it right away. I want to be able to drop everything and do that. And I want to be talking to buyers and selling my inventory, selling my deals that I have. Those are my three things I really want to concentrate on and, and have other people do things for me. Um, there was a chat. Um, Robin, all right, send me a text message. Um, I'm, I'm going to put my phone number in there. You can see it on there. Send me a text message with your name, full name, cell phone, and email address. And okay. I will send you my purchase agreement and I'll send you my assignment agreement. Okay. Thank you. And anyone, me, Robin, anyone local that needs help on a deal, um, reach out to me. I can help you and I could take it over if you need to, or I could coach you through it. And we'll split the deal 50-50 if, um, if that works for you. If not, that's fine too. I'm just giving, I'm just throwing it out there, okay? Um, so here's what I wanted to talk to you guys about a strategy. I did one today and, um, and I got a few in my pipeline. Uh, it's in Michigan. It's about two hours away from my house. And it was a pre-foreclosure. OK, it was the balance is fifty four thousand dollars. My team, one of my team members talked to their guy and we go through a series of questions. We try to find out what they want to do. It's going to auction in two weeks. And when I say excuse me, when I say auction, I mean foreclosure. It's going to foreclosure in two weeks. So the seller, the owner wanted to stay in the property and he needed help. I told him, which I, my team told him, you know, to stay in the house, you got to catch up the mortgage before the two weeks. Because once it goes to sale in the state of Michigan, you cannot catch it up. You got to, you got six months to pay it off in full. Okay. He goes, I don't have the money. I can't do it. I'm $10,000 behind. And he goes, well, we could possibly purchase this property for you. And he said, I really want to live in the house. I don't want to move. He's him, it's him, his wife, and two children. And they've been there 13 years. So I'm talking, to, um, they're talking to him and they say, I got a hot lead, right? They send it to me. I look at it and I go over it. I said, make an appointment for me to get on the phone with them. They did. And I, they call them and they, I said, call them. And then I, they get me on the phone. So we're all on the phone together because I want my team to listen to what I say so they could learn and then they might be able to do this themselves with, you know, without me. And it might take four or five months down the road until it clicks, but I'm training them by um, actually doing it with them. Long story short, talked to the guy, found out a few things. First, I checked the house. It's worth 130000 he owes 53,000, okay? So there's plenty of equity there. I offered him $10,000 in cash to move. He said, no, I wanna stay in the house. I said, great. Well, if you stay in the house, I go, how much is your payment? His payment's 485 a month. That includes taxes and insurance, everything. And remember, he's been there 13 years, so he only has 17 years left on the mortgage. So, He's getting to the point where a lot of it's principal that's being paid off. And I said, how much can I find out why he fell behind? And he just said, I had to put a roof on my house. So he put a brand new roof on it. He had to do something to the, um, what did he call it? Because it's on a well. He had to do something to the drain field. He fixed that. And then COVID, he lost hours. He, you know, he wasn't working. So all that kind of played and he fell behind. So he's like 10 grand behind. So I said, What's your, where do you work at? He told me he's been there a long time. He makes $22 an hour and he's working overtime. His wife's also working. And I said, what can you afford in rent? 
I said, I cannot buy this and sell it back to you. Um, and I don't know anyone that would do that. Okay. I go, what could, if I was able to catch up your mortgage, what can you afford for rent? So he told me I could afford $700. That's not enough because the, I could rent this house for a thousand dollars a month. So I said, look, I could, you know, I explained it to him, talked to him, had a great conversation and said, if you could do $850, no security deposit, nothing like that, and pay that. Um, and that's a discount because I could probably, I could get a thousand, maybe more. And, and um, he said he could do it. So what I'm doing now, I get it under contract. I get this deal on the contract. I got two weeks before the auction. I think it's two weeks. It might be a week. I can't, I'm getting some stuff confused, but let's say it's two weeks. So I got a catch it up the date and buy it subject to. So I'm buying it subject to the mortgage, meaning his mortgage is going to stay in place, but he's going to deed the house to me. Okay. So that's how I explained it to him. And then I'm going to pay it for 17 years until it gets paid off. Okay. So he understands everything. He likes the idea. He's on board. I send him a contract, never even looked at the house mm -hmm. to e-sign it. So I send him my purchase agreement and I explain everything in my additional comments on my purchase agreement, what I'm doing. In my purchase agreement, it says I can assign the contract, which I'm going to do, okay? I'm gonna assign it to another buyer who's gonna pay $20,000 for this property. And he's gonna take my position I'm going to make 10. The 10 is going to catch up the mortgage. And then he's going to keep this guy and family as a renter. Okay. So it's another way of wholesaling. I'm wholesaling a subject to deal. Okay. That's worth 130,000. My guy is going to be in it for 50 or 50, 73,000. So he's almost, he's like, 45% equity still in this property. So he's, it's not risky at all. Now, you always got to tell everyone the good and the bad. And I told my investor, I said, here's the bad thing. What if this guy doesn't pay rent and you go to your victim? Now you got, you're paying his mortgage, but he's not paying rent and you have to evict him. You got to be prepared to, once you evict him, you know, to sell the house because if you or get a loan and pay it off, if he creates a, a, you know, a issue with the mortgage and the mortgage company, right? Because you're buying it subject to his mortgage and they could call it due if he does that. But why would some, and I said, but why would he do that? I would, I explained it to him in the beginning. I said, look, if you don't pay your rent, you're getting evicted. And if you get evicted and you, say something to the mortgage company about you about you not living there and you're not paying it and someone else is paying it for you all it's going to do is ruin your credit you know so i kind of explain that to him and then i tell him if that happens i'm just going to pay it off and i'm going to own the house and sell it or 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 rent it to someone else so i'm i'm trying to put everything out in the open so everyone understands everything and i'm not hiding anything and so that's um, that's how you wholesale a subject to deal where it's subject to the mortgage. The person's going to own it. And I have I just locked this up today and I got three people that want it already. So that's this is going to be the new climate in with the way the rates are going higher. The so on investors that's trying, you know, we sell deals to investors that like rentals and they go and get a mortgage to keep a house for their portfolio. And they're getting, you know, 6%, 5.5%. Now they're at 8 and 9%, you know, with the rates going up. And, and a lot of these companies are getting scared and they're making it, instead of doing 80% loan to value or 75% loan to value, they're, make, they're, they're going to 65% loan to value. So you're going to see all this, you know, and so these are going to be great deals um all the way around for people 
All right. Does anyone have any questions on that or if they have any? Um, I know I said it really, really fast, but I just wanted to throw out another way of wholesaling. Does it make sense? Does everyone understand it? Is that why there's no questions? Hey, Todd, it's Lisa. <clears throat> I put a couple of questions in the chat. Oh, okay. Let me. Uh, no, no problem. Did you um, or will you be creating a lease agreement with the borrower? Or are you going to have them go month to month? Um, great question. Um, oh, I see your. I see all the messages. I'm sorry, I was going crazy at talking. So. Um, so I'm going to let the buyer. buyer I'm selling it to worry about, figure out how he wants to handle that. Okay. 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 And I'm not, I always suggest that there's no, um, security deposit because the security deposit is the people living in the property already. And, you know, it, you know, they, they did a roof. They've been there for such a long time. I don't think it's necessary. In the state of Michigan, you really can't get someone's security deposit if they don't pay rent, only if they damage a house. And how are you going to prove they damage it? Because you're not, you really don't have, even on someone like that, you really don't have to do repairs to the house unless it's dangerous, you know, no smoke detectors, safety, let's call it safety issues. Because so, they've been living in it the way it is. I'm not going to do any repairs unless there's smoke detectors, handrails, something that's going to hurt somebody. But if it needs painting, I'm not painting it. If it needs flooring, I'm not doing the flooring. Um, if something's leaking, I'm going to fix that. And so I'm going to save money on something like that. Okay. So the question, one of the questions you had, Lisa, says, and I see it right. Hey, did you create a lease agreement with the Bauer? No, I didn't yet. I'm going to let them do it. And did you say that you're selling the con? I would sell this contract for $20,000. And the 20, and I'll let my buyer know that that includes my fee and includes the amount of money that to catch up the loan. Okay. And I also use a title company that is familiar with subject twos locally. Because they know how to, because it's really important if you know how to talk to the insurance company, homeowners insurance company, because you want to make sure they don't, there's no red flags that will show up to the mortgage company that they, they're, they're, um, someone else is paying this loan, okay, type of deal. All right, perfect. Um, Robin, thank you for that. Yeah, so that's, that is um, part of the, yeah, that's, I mean, if you go on YouTube, you'll see people talking about sub twos. Trust me, I'm not even, I don't even think I'm qualified to teach people how to do it. You know, I just do it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I just do it. I'm not really that into it. I mean, I'm into it. Trust me. I want to do a hundred of these a month, so Hey, Todd, this is Robin again. Yeah. I just, I am amazed at this because I've did a lot of live training over the last two weeks and no one has even mentioned, these are people with like over 10 years experience. So this is just blowing my mind. Well, good. Yeah, I wanted to ask another project. I've yeah. been calling around as, you know, trying to get all my, um, contacts together before I move forward. I wanted to know about title companies because what I've been discovering as a new kid on the block that not all title real estate companies do wholesaling. Yeah. Do you have recommendation? But I did talk to a, uh, a title person that's really, he said it's so hot. He's wondering why people like Liberty doesn't do it yet. Yeah, so they're just traditional title companies. And they have underwriters and just like real estate agents, a lot of them are not hip to wholesaling. So, um, yeah, I know three, I know, shit, I know five or six locally that do that deal with wholesalers. And I could give you 
two or three. I'll give you the one I use all the time. So just send me send me an email and um, send me a text with your information and what everything you want. Title companies. I use BD Title. Um, a girl named Melissa. And with my subject twos, I do. I use Legacy Title here and locally. But I could give you Detroit Title and Escrow. They're really good. I've used them for years. Um, and Michigan Investment, MIT, Michigan Investment Title is also a lot of wholesalers go to. So, but the key is, do you, for me, the reason I like Speedy is I have a girl there. I could call her right now, text her, and she'll respond to me and she'll bend over backwards for me. Okay. So that's why Super. Super. I create that relationship with them. And um, they'll, they'll pretty much, she processes my deals for me. So, it's like I got a team member without having to pay her, you know. Awesome. Hey, Todd, um, quick question, just so I understand the numbers. The reinstatement is 10000 The seller gets 10000 Is that right? Did I understand that right? No, the seller is not getting anything. The mortgage is behind $10,000. Got it. Okay. Yeah, so I we're going to reinstate that mortgage, catch it up to date so it stops the foreclosure and start making that payment every month. And then the seller gets to stay in the house. So the seller's compensation is they don't have to move. And so does that mean that your your net is going to be 10,000? Correct. Okay. Yeah. And um, just a, a little question, because seller financing to me is really important to me this seems like it might be a good seller financing opportunity um have you ever done that so it would be you could sell it back to them i would not do it right away because you want them to prove that they're going to pay payments on time and they don't have any money to put down so i don't like it they don't and and it's only got 17 years left on the mortgage. So I would be honest, I'm, I'm always honest, but most likely in my experience, 80% of the time you help out someone living in a house because they went to foreclosure, they fell behind, 80% of the, maybe if it's a higher percentage, they are not gonna be successful. Yes, I totally, totally agree with you. And I was, I'm sorry, I didn't complete my thought. I was actually thinking of not, on seller financing, of not uh, selling to the owner. Um, and so, you know, there are two weeks till foreclosure, so they don't really have a lot of options if you chose to not let them stay. But yeah. this house has so much equity that I, I don't know, I just saw yeah. dollar I, signs with it, seller financing. Right. So I could just say, I, you know, I got to buy it from you or I can help you sell it and things like that. But, you know, I want them to stay in the house. And I don't want it to go to auction because if it goes to auction, there's going to be multiple people because there's a lot of equity here. Okay. So I probably won't be in, I won't even be in it. You know what I mean? If it, if yeah. it, so I'm just trying to work out a different angle. Yeah. All those are good angles. There's, it depends on the equity, depends on the house, depends on if he would have told me, he's really not working and the job wasn't stable and things like, and he didn't just put a roof on the house. I wouldn't even think about renting it back to him. That is the really the last resort for me. I don't like to rent it back to the person that's losing it, to be honest with you. But in this case, I, they've been there 13 years. He's got a stable income. He put a roof on it. It sounds like they're getting, and they got a couple of kids. It sounds like they're getting their shit together. I, I think it's a good try, you know, and worst comes to worst, we have to evict them and, and then you could sell or finance it, you could fix it and sell it, you could re-rent it, you got all your options back on the table. Right, right, and I, you know, I love your idea here, um, I think it's really, really awesome, because it's a, it's a quick in and out, especially for someone that wants to be a landlord and does not have to go to the bank 
to get another loan or if they're maxed out at 10 exactly. personal loans. Yep. Or they don't have a lot of money. Might, to, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. People on the call might not know that if you're, you know, the, the bank has a limit of 10 personal loans. So if you want to be a landlord and you have your own personal house and then you buy nine rentals, you're done. You have to find it, uh, you know, if you're the husband, then you can, the wife can buy it. But really the idea is what Todd's talking about, which is to start buying houses by taking over someone else's loan and using their credits. I think it's really brilliant. And in our climate now, we're going to be finding more people going to foreclosure, unfortunately, but they got the 3% interest rate, the 4% interest rate, things like that, that are gone for now, you know, so it's going to be a really a good, a good strategy. And D, um, Hammond, you're right, you're saving the seller's credit, because we're going to catch it up to date, they're not going to have a foreclosure on their credit, and we're going to make the payments on time, okay, and, and they get to stay in the house, so, so, and I'll explain to them, I'll make sure I over disclose everything to them, and and make sure they understand. So when I do, or excuse me, when the, and I keep an eye on these because when I know if my investor I wholesale it to doesn't do their job, then I'll just step in and take it from them, you know. Um, so Todd, will you have a deed of trust and, and now are you gonna maybe wrap this a little bit with, I could wrap it and make a monthly payment on top of it, but no, when I wholesale it to somebody, I'm not, I'm not wrapping and I'm not going to wrap it because they're keeping it as a rental. I probably would not wrap maybe down the road. I'm not, I know wraps not done. I ha, I'm not familiar with them. Like it's not part of my arsenal right now, oh, but gotcha. it probably will be soon you know well what i was thinking about is uh in order to like if the um you know we've all heard of this where a landlord takes their rent and puts it in their pocket instead of paying the bank and then the bank wants to foreclose well in this case the the credit is the sellers and so one of the things that i do when i do sell and seller financing a wrap is i have my buyer go through a loan servicing company yeah, that Same. yeah, that um, lets me know monthly that that payment has been made. And um, you, the reason I, I thought about this is because you said if the if your buyer, the landlord buyer does not make the payment, then you would just step in and take it from him. And there's got to be some paperwork, a deed of trust in particular that says you can do that. And usually that happens when you stay in the middle and you make, you yeah. know, even if it's five dollars exactly yeah, yeah. yeah that, that i require them to use the loan servicing because especially when you're doing subject twos you want to set it all all up front the correct way with the insurance the the service you know the loan servicing company everything done right and then it you'll never have an issue right and and that's you know you don't want any red flags definitely you know, what does that cost that's um 20 bucks a month or maybe even less about 35 well here yeah. in texas it's about 35 dollars yeah. i've got a loan servicing company that i've used for i don't know since 2014 and um the owner of the company is actually a friend of mine so we talk about this kind of stuff but her her rates are 35 dollars, and the buyer which in this case would be your landlord buyer is the one that pays that right every month yeah no i'll require that i think that's, that's good sure. yeah i would like to know your friend's information um you can yes. send it to me that'd be awesome because I'll, yeah i'll text it to you or do you want me to put it in the chat which you prefer you could, you could text it to me it would be great you could put okay. it in the chat also um I used the company in the past called, um, it's a weird name, like Moat Note or something like that. Hmm. It's, um, 
a guru has it. It's one of the gurus that I listen to. Um, they have, a, they, you know, another business type of deal. And it's about, it might be a little less than 35 bucks, but it might be 30 bucks or 25 bucks. It's not that big of a deal, you know? Yeah. You know, I, I, I might've uh, kind of overstepped my bounds there. I'm not sure that everybody understands what a loan servicing company is. Yeah. So and you could correct me if I'm wrong, Lisa, but loan servicing company would be a company that the person I assign it to would pay directly to the loan servicing company, and then they will pay the bank or the mortgage company every month. So you're kind of, it even, it's even better if this person that is owns it, the investor, if he goes to get a refinance loan, anything like that, it's not like, it, it's just another, you look, you just talk to the loan servicing company, you get the proof of payments and, in the history and things like that, right from them. Is that what? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, so basically, if you, which I don't, I, I have um, some houses that I've sold on seller financing. And so I don't want to mess with the buyer sending me payments. So, and it's not going to cost me anything to have a third party yep. collect those payments for me. So, for example, um, one of my houses, the pay, the uh, buyer's payment is $1,230 a month. Mm -hmm. They pay the loan servicing company directly. And then I have an underlying loan, which is a personal loan from my seller that I bought the house from. So that the house was free and clear. So I'm just paying them in equity. So my payments are $500 a month. So the loan servicing company pulls out the first $500 out of the, the um, buyer's payment, monthly mortgage payment, and they pay Vicki, my seller, and then they send the remaining to me. And the bank, well, if she doesn't have a bank, but if a borrower, like in your case with this seller, they do have an underlying mortgage, then the loan servicing company also uh, keeps up with escrow. So they are part of who the bank sends statements to. Right. And um, escrow is what a bank needs to have in their account to pay for insurance and taxes. And that usually goes up every, every year. And, um, and then, uh, so whoever needs to get paid, the loan servicing company collects the, the entire amount and then they distribute it according to who is owed it. If the bank gets that much and Todd gets some money and I get some money, then they will distribute it. However, the buyer has to pay the $35. So if their payment is say $1,000 for mortgage, then they actually pay $1,035 every month. And that's the fee that the loan servicing company charges to collect the money and yeah. distribute the money. But the other thing that they do that's really, really good is they report the payments to the credit bureau. So someone that can't get a loan from a bank that is buying, a, taking over payments, their credit can be improved so that in the future, perhaps their credit will be improved so much that they can cash out their seller, right. which would be like Todd in this case. And uh, then Todd could get a great big check and the buyers can reduce their interest payment. So I'm sorry, I probably no. went too far. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. There's, so there's a lot of different um, strategies or, you know, good ways of doing it because, you know, you don't want to be, if you have 20 of these, you, you know, you want to, you don't want to have to be, you know, they're going to be on top of it for you. And you don't be notified if they're not making the payments or you didn't get your payment. And, um, there's, there's ways of doing, 
um, I don't, I don't even want to say it because there's other ways of getting the house back without going to foreclosure, foreclosing on the investor, but um, that's a whole different seminar, I think. But yeah. So Todd, you're, you're, um, I think this is such a great idea. Do you have a threshold of how much you're willing to use a strategy based on the reinstatement? I'm sorry, I said that totally wrong. What is the maximum amount of reinstatement or the payments being behind that you would do this kind of strategy with? Yeah, so it's going to be a basis, you know, deal to deal basis, because it just depends on where, you know, how, where it's at. I've seen some people that are 30 grand behind that it still is a good deal. And then I've seen others that are, you know, 10 grand that it's not a good deal. So it's a deal by deal basis, depending on, you know, as a wholesaler, I got to make sure I got to, I don't have a formula because it's a deal to deal basis. You can't just plug in numbers. It's what I think I could sell the house at the end of the day for to give someone, an investor, a good deal. Um, and still, you know, what, what can I add on top of it? and still pay off the mortgage, okay? So this particular one, just to tell you the true numbers, they're only $6,100 behind. And um, I got it out there at 20 grand. It's really not 10. That's the true number, okay? So I'm making a little more than 10 on that one. But so it's a deal by deal um, situation that you look at it, you try to figure out it, you know. Now, if these guys, if the house was worth, 80,000 and they owe 53 and they, they're 10 grand behind, I'll probably add five grand on top of it and try to sell it. It's still gonna be a tighter deal. I might not even be able to sell that to somebody. So, it, you know, and if they just bought the house three years ago and there's 27 years left, that's not very exciting either unless I could re-rent it to somebody else and they're moving. So every little bit of situation in the deal plays a role on what makes it a strong deal or not a strong deal. So like I said, if they owed eight, if it was worth 80 and they owed 53 and they were 10 grand behind, I would not offer them to stay in the house uh, I, because I would need to get that 1,000 or 1,100 in rent and sell it and make five grand at the end of the day. Hopefully that made sense, you know. It does. Um, can I, um, if it's okay, cause I'm kind of watching the clock since you said you have to get yeah. off right at the, like in 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, can, can we talk uh, more about the four people that are going to be working with you or are working with you? And the reason I ask is I am, massively bottlenecked. I've got more leads coming in than I can. I'm so behind. And I thought last week that I wanted to hire, say, three acquisitionists for like one for seller financing, one for wholesale, one for anyway, I don't want to get into the weeds with that. And um and I was meeting with my business consultant and she said, that's not your problem. Your problem is going to be bottlenecking. Who's going to process all these leads? And I'm like, I am bionic women. <laughs> and, and it's not working out. Like I said, it would Todd. <laughs> yeah, so you need a personal assistant that, that takes direction. And over time, it's less direction. I, I talked to my coach. I got a, a, a coach. And he told me once he hired a pers personal assistant, he made triple the income. Okay. So you define, your job, what's that? Can you define personal assistant? I think about a personal assistant of somebody that goes and pick up your clothes at the cleaners. And I, I don't think of them in terms of business. Yeah. So my, yeah, maybe I have the wrong name for them. So the personal assistant is like a mini me that I train that 
is going to handle contracts, dealing with title companies, making sure things are rolling, making sure I'm get ordering titles, um, whatever I could train them to do that I don't have to do. And then your job would be dealing with your sales team or dealing with the deals that they put in front of you to deal with the sellers. Okay, eventually you'll be able to train someone to do that also, but that could take years, you know, because your experience and, you know, but, but, you know, dealing with the emails, um, responding to emails, or if you respond to an email, then you could copy them on there and they could make sure they could, they could take it from there. Okay. And you got to have, you got to meet with them every morning and, and have a running list of what's going on active and things that you want them to handle, not just in the morning, you might have them 10 things that you want them to handle or find out about. Then there might be another 10 things during the day that come up that they handle because they've seen the emails and things like that. So it's a, it's a lot of training, but it's worth it, you know, definitely worth it because eventually, you know, they're going to handle those things for you. You know, just think I got three deals that I need to sell and I can't even, I don't have time to even look at them. You know what I mean? And that's how I make money is by selling deals. I do. Yes. Please keep talking. <laughs> yeah. So I'm trying to, and all you, all you, I would suggest you just take a week or maybe two weeks and just put a pad of paper next to you, carry it with you the whole day and everything you do that day, write it down and then do that every day and then go through it either once a day, once a week and pick out the things that you could train somebody else to do for you and and just keep doing that and train them and and um and put systems in place and things like that a virtual assistant that you pay four bucks an hour to which is re which is a good money for them but really good for you is what i suggest you know because you're never going to have any family dynamics. You're, you could get two of them to do and still save money than what you would pay someone locally to do, you know? So that's, that's kind of what I think the first, and I did it backwards is I use, I got one last. I should have got one years ago. That should have been the first thing I did. But I didn't take the time and meet with them every day. You got to meet with them every day. You do a Zoom call, um, 9.30 every morning. You go through the day. You go through the deals. You tell them, answer any questions that they might have. Teach them something. And, you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes goes by. And, and you become friends with them. And, you, and you know, you're sincere and everything else. And there you go. You're, you're off and running. Uh, thank you for that. When you talk about they handle contracts, are you talking about they're writing contracts or making sure they go to the title company or? Well, I teach them how to, if I have a deal that I want to send a purchase agreement to, to get e-signed or assignment agreement, they get e-signed. I teach them how to do that. It's really simple. You know, stuff like that. Gotcha. Okay. Thank yeah. you so I mean, they're much. not going to know the numbers. I'm going to have to tell them everything. And I could just go on WhatsApp, talk it into it, you know, say, okay, this is the spire, this is the seller, this is the amount, this is the EMD, or this is that, put this in the agreement, put that in the agreement, and this and that. And then we might, I might review it with them, you know, for the first 10 times they do it and fix their mistakes and help them with the mistakes. And then eventually I know they got it, they know what they're doing. And if I leave something off, they're gonna they're gonna call me or or send me a WhatsApp on a voicemail saying you didn't tell me who the um, when you want to close it. You know how many days? Thirty days. Okay, perfect. You know because I'm gonna forget something. I always do. And then they can make sure it gets e-signed. 
And if not, they can follow up with the people when they order the title in two days automatically, they know to reach back out to the title company to what, where's my title? I haven't seen it yet. And then the title company, you know, the title people are going to respond to the person that speaks the loudest. And I'm the type of guy I order a title. I, I expect it in three or four days. And if I don't have it in three or four days, I won't remember until eight or nine days from now. So if you're not on top of it, you're not going to get it. If you're always on top of it, you're going to get it. You're going to yell at them. You're going to say, not yell at them, but you're going to say, I need my title. It's important. Let's do it. Let's do it. You know, where's the title? Where's it? They want to get rid of you, right? Wow. Oh, this is exciting. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Absolutely. I think this is valuable for for everyone that wants to grow their business. On your disposition, when you're working with your buyers, are you still going to handle that part? Or are you thinking of hiring another person just to work with buyers and sell? Yeah, I'm going to handle it because um, a lot of them I have relationships with already. But I'm going to, we're going to, my assistant's going to search for new buyers and they're going to be able to call them um, and find out what, if they're actively buying right now. And if so, what are you looking to buy? You're buying fix flip, fix and flips, or you're buying rentals. Are you, are you hip to subject twos? Are you interested? Where areas are you buying? And if I was able to find you a deal, when will you like to buy? So if the ones that are urgent and they're ready to buy right now, they're going to let me know and they're going to schedule an appointment for me to talk to them. So I don't have to do all the searching and things like that. And if they say, well, call me in 30 days, I'll be interested in buying. They're going to call them in 30 days and they're going to stay on top of it. You know, so we're going to, I'm going to teach them how to do that because that is the key to this game is there's nothing like having a buyer in line for a deal like a, like that subject two deal I got today. I already sent it to three people. I know they all want it. You know, they're all three are they're my buyers. I know they're gonna take it. I don't have to go in Facebook and try to find someone I don't know. Because if you have a relationship with someone and you trust them, you know they're gonna close. So you could talk with confidence to your sellers and and things like that. Awesome. That's, right. that's so great for all of us that do wholesaling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. But I know it's it's 830 now. I really appreciate everyone that was on. Hopefully you got something out of this. And this is and I appreciate you too, Lisa, all the great questions. And and anyone and Robin, you gave me some, you know, all the all the great feedback. So Next week, we do this every Wednesday um, at 7.30. And I want to try to bring something to the table every time. And, and But I'm really here for you guys to have questions. So anything during the week you're, you guys come up with that you, know, you want to ask, don't be shy. Um, please don't be shy. Just bring it on, you know? Bring in a question in and we'll, you know, you guys could reach out to me, send me a text message during the week. That's the best way if you guys need something and how I can help you. I do have a coaching program um, where we have two group sessions every week. It's very reasonable. If someone's interested, wonderful. I do not have anyone that's not in Michigan. Um, everyone, but I've done deals outside of Michigan. So if you want to learn wholesaling, um, feel free to reach out to me. I can send you what, what it's all about. It's actually $395 per month is the coaching program. I'm not trying to get you guys to join it because my, my, when someone knows it's right for them, they'll join it. That's how I look at it. And it's in really quickly and then I'll stop. Um, the reason why I really did the coaching is because I have a coach. He's helped me out a lot. Um, 
And the way he runs his sessions is the way I run mine. And the way I did it before, it was, you know, I try to, I was more wanting people to do deals than they wanted to do it and spent too much time. And I have a lot of people that reach out to me and say, can you help me? Can I have coffee with you? Can I do this? Can I do that? And if I have 20 people a week asking me this and I only talk to one or two, I feel like a, you know, I feel bad because <laughs> I can't talk to everyone. I, don't, I just don't have time. So I said, look, if someone has to pay for it, I'm going to give them my time. They're going to give me their time. They're going to really try it. How many people have I talked to that say they want to wholesale and I spend an hour or two with them and I never hear from them again. So that's why I do it. And I think it's doing really well. So uh, I'm, I'm really excited about it. But anyway, that's it. <laughs> I'll see you guys next Wednesday. I appreciate it. I got to call a, uh, someone and lock up a deal. I'm really excited about this one. So, all right. Thank you guys. Appreciate you. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you, Todd. It was awesome tonight. I love you. your, your new wholesale strategy. It's awesome. 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 Thank you so much. Lisa, be, before you leave, yeah. find, find out what the foreclosure redemption period is in Texas if they have one, okay? It's two years for two, homestead four. and six months for investment property. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. But, wow, someone could go into foreclosure and live in their house for two years? Well, no, it could be sold at the auction and let's just say you buy it at the auction, you really can't do a whole lot with that house, but rent it. Um, or I guess you, I guess you could sell it, but in Texas, the, the, the owner has the right to come back and they have to pay you. Uh, but they have the right to claim their home back in for 24 months. But they would have to pay you all the money that you had paid in renovations yeah. or whatever. If it's an investment property or if it's land, then it's only six months. So you don't want to renovate a house um, that you get at the auction and right. put a lot of money into it. That's yeah. It. So we'll have to talk about that. All right. Yeah, that's why I never buy it. I know you it. told me a lot about it just now, but I want to get deeper into it with you because um, I'll tell you how Michigan is. You'll freak out. Okay. Okay. Right. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Appreciate your time and expertise. Yep. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.